Scoundrel Zeke, another Star Wars podcast. I am Frank Janis alongside Brandon the Hot Man Hannah and <laughs> Kevin the Smasher Smets, who's uh, holding a Revan t shirt and is, and is chomping. Look at the lighting in here, dude. This is a professional light up setup right here. It's like I'm in a movie or I'm broadcasting live from. Uh, uh, Hosnian Prime. <laughs> From Hosnian Prime. Yeah. yeah I was gonna say post destruction. Post destruction. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a disaster. If anybody knows, yeah, we could have our own podcast for the first thirty minutes trying to get it set up here. I got my new camera. It's all good, but the lighting setup sucks. And so, yeah. It's we'll a work in progress, but uh, speaking of works in progress, we're here to talk about the Mandalorian and Grogu movie was announced uh, this week. As well as Ahsoka season two is apparently uh, being been confirmed in development, so we're going to talk about all of that this week. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button right now. Click it right now. Do it right now. Thank you. And then I, hit I, I, hit that I, like button. Yeah, Kevin, it. have you subscribed to the channel yet? Have you? Su- yeah, hit that subscribe button, Kevin. Thank you. Have and, you subscribed uh, to Kotor Movie Saga? I'm not even subbed to my own channel, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can but you, does uh does kotor have a podcast feed no you can but what scoundrels inc does scoundrels inc does it. so you can subscribe to that we're the it's, unofficial it's, kotor podcast <laughs> that's i mean kind of sometimes we are come sometimes. on my podcast for kotor had the greatest name ever kotor radio all one word <laughs> it was fucking brilliant i had hk 47 with the headphones is great it's, if I were to do that now, then I'd be on three Star Wars podcasts, and that's just a little too much. I'm <laughs> that's where you draw the line, yeah. That's yeah. where you have to draw the line somewhere. We also have social media, Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok. We'll, we'll start up the short thread over there pretty soon. Threads. <laughs> yeah, who could forget about yeah, yeah, threads? Yeah, first of all, can I just say something, Brandon, Hannah? You're, you're tweeting way too much, man. You're supposed to be Mr. Threads, and I'm seeing you on my Twitter. I know. <laughs> we, like, I know. Unfortunately, you know... I had to cave in a little bit, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm doing my own YouTube channel. You know, if you want to go subscribe there, if you're watching, Give Brandon the name of it. yeah, just youtube.com slash Brandon Hannah, uh, clever, clever. I know. Right. You used your uh, government name. Wow. I did. That's, that's what they tell me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing uh, film physics videos over there. So if you're interested in the physics that happens in films, go over and check that out. But, uh yeah you know i'm trying to keep up that's my largest platform over on uh x x how many quarts of milk can they get out of the thala sirens in the last jedi like if luke were to work all day oh long gosh. on the island of octu how how many bushels is that a thing no but no i feel i feel like a Leaders, lot you probably... I feel like there's yeah. an episode there stay tuned yeah stay tuned stay tuned for for that I, I, yeah <laughs> You're like Mike Rowe of the Dirty Jobs Star Wars universe. Oh you know? my Just... god, could you imagine? <laughs> He's the Mark Rober of Star Wars. That's what he is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, let's get into this news that that broke uh, this Frank week. Laurel and Hardy of Star Wars. <laughs> More like uh, maybe reference. the Abbott Costello. That. Maybe Abbott Costello. <laughs> Who's on first? Well, Luke's on first. <laughs> yeah. Han's on second. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, let's yeah, go. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm derailing. So. The Mandalorian and Grogu. I guess that's the title of the movie. It was italicized in the press release. I like so I th- that. Do you, do you like the title? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like, thought it was like, okay. I see so many people complaining, and I'm like, it's like, I don't know. Like, this is a horrible example, but it's like Batman and Robin. You know, it's like, what else, what else are you going to call it? <laughs> it's, dude, it's like Oppenheimer and Barbie. Sundance Come on. Yeah. <laughs> the Sundance Kid, one of the greatest movies fucking of all time. Come on. Yeah. Like well, uh, it's the two of them on their adventures. Probably. I just, I, I just kind of wish it had a subtitle to it. That's the only thing. Dawn of Justice. I'm, I'm over subtitles, <laughs> man. Dawn. Dawn. I'm over subtitles. Dawn of Justice. Godzilla yeah, X go. Kong: The New Empire. Like that's that's a mouthful, yeah, man. We'll like, have a Star Wars story for for you, Frank. It becomes too much. Like keep it simple. Yeah. But I, the one the one gripe I have with it is, you know, to me, I always thought that like the underlying like reveal of it all was that that like that Grogu is actually the titular Mandalorian in the show. Like it's about his journey 
yeah. into becoming oh, a Mandalorian. It's that it's and, not. It, right, um, it's but mean. now they're just calling it the Mandalorian Grogu, and they should call it the Mandalorian and Din Djarin. <laughs> right. That would be <laughs> man. Could you? you this 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 fandom's already been through the ringer this week. Imagine you threw that out there this week. Oh, people would have been beside themselves to say the least. <laughs> um, yeah, I, my only thing is like I just would like a subtitle, you know, because like it's Star Wars episode blah blah blah. The you know the Empire, you know whatever. This is just the Mandalorian Grogu. Okay, it's actually fine. they they could take from Godzilla Kong would be. The Mandalorian and Grogu, the New Empire. The that's new a Empire. good. That's a good right. Star Wars title right there. Man, because then you have. I don't think it needs a subtitle, man. I Force Awakens know. could have been called the New Empire, but we'll talk about that on I think next week's show. I'm so lost on that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about that on March 10th. Okay, good job, good job. And on March 12th, we are having a birthday party for my kitty cat son, Clementine, Julius Augustus, Hannah hyphen Ramirez. Wow, now you talking about a mouthful. <laughs> that is that is his government name. <laughs> that's his. That's on the birth certificate. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, what do you think about this announcement? Because I think we had heard rumors before that season four was going going to be a a movie. Um, they're going to convert it into a movie as opposed to a season of television on Disney Plus. Uh, but also, if you read the Deadline article in there, they wrote at present. A fourth season of his hit series is also in development. So it sounds like we're getting the movie and then sometime later a season four. Oh uh, what's your thoughts on all of this, Kevin? That you know Do we know did it push Ray or is is there It an didn't order? say anything was pushed. Um plus there's also no definitive release date for any of those movies that were talked about at celebration. So we can't say it was necessarily pushed or not. But so this is gonna be we like can't Iron say it was Man. This is going to be like was... Iron Man. It's going to set up the Filoni Avengers movie, basically. Because it's gonna it's coming out before the Avengers movie. <laughs> the Filoni, whatever yeah. his movie's going to be. The Filongers. Uh I figured, dude, th- like, there are a lot of rumors about it. Um, it's less episodes that we get. Um, there are some arguments for having less episodes and having less content. I, I have not been shy about this. I've said it on our show, on Jedi Way. I miss Star Wars in the theater. So uh, it's a bummer that for the fans that loved it on TV and getting it every week, you know, for eight week, or ten weeks at a time, I'm sorry that they're going to miss out on this. But, I mean, nothing is going to be better than where we, we get to all be together in a shared uh, experience and watch it opening night and have the cheers and stuff like that. That is, like, something that we just we've been missing with – and it, to be honest, like Star Wars TV for me has almost, I told you this when I watched Solo with my wife, that like Star Wars TV has almost for me, and I'm not saying it's for everyone, and I, I love their content. There's really no, I mean, come on, I, Obi-Wan is like my favorite of all of them, and everybody hates that, and I didn't hate Book of Boba Fett. But so much Star Wars TV, to me, when I was watching Solo, there were times where I had to catch myself and remind myself, I'm watching a movie, I'm not watching, a, you know, a two-hour episode of, of star wars tv and yeah. so i just thought that i think we were getting inundated with so much star wars tv that i really hope we're taking a step back on so many shows and maybe you get one show a year one movie a year moving forward that would be dope right um and that i know it's blasphemy but i'm not trying to get less star wars i mean i guess i am but i think sometimes um less is more and so i'm i'm very happy with this announcement uh favreau's gonna knock it out of the park he's a great director so you can see any of his movies even cowboys and aliens i love so <laughs> um i'm excited at the news i'm not surprised at the news i heard there there are rumors about this for a while yeah um and you're still gonna get ahsoka now they, it's interesting that they paired the ahsoka news which we'll get to after this with it i think it was like just to kind of hey the lesson the blow we're also gonna have Ahsoka coming back, so you're still going to get Star Wars TV. It's not entirely going away, but right. I hope this is a sign of things to come that they're going to really start focusing on the movie. We haven't had a movie in the theaters now since 2019. That's insane. 2024. I I got diagnosed and had cancer and beat cancer since the Star Wars movie came out. Ugh. You know what I mean? It's like, friendly. come on. <laughs> and, uh, so I really, you know, with the, with the original plan, they were going to do one like every year, and I was, I remember thinking like, oh my god, that means like. <laughs> when it was 2015 for the four stories i'm like that means if they do one every year like ping pong between star wars story and episodes i was like by 2025 we'll have 10 star wars movies now granted we have more than 10 star wars episodes you can watch and we have law way more runtime of total star wars content and i'm yeah. not hating on it per se 
but I'm just glad that they're going to take some of it and now start making bigger deals of it. I just hope they minimize the use of the volume and they shoot. Imagine an episode of man, not episode, but a movie of the Mandalorian and Grogu. And it's more shot like Andor and like on real world, loca- real world locations. Oh, that'll be great. Not real world. Lo- not, 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 not like at the Eiffel tower or anything. I'm saying like <laughs> yeah. real world, like in, in lo- on location. So right, thumbs right. up for me. Brandon, um, your thoughts on, on the movie and what do you think about them also? I mean, Deadline's kind of been like, yeah, there's going to be a season four at present. I mean, the wording is mm-hmm. is interesting. Uh, oh, really? Like, well, if they say at present, which means right now it seems like, yeah, we'll do a season four. Because remember, right before the strike, news had came out that Filoni had – not Filoni, Favreau – had completed – writing season four of the Mandalorian. Uh, Brandy, do you think the season four that was reported on, mm-hmm. it was converted into a movie or, or do you think the season four is, is uh, to be aired later, you know, produced later? Um, I, I think it was converted to the movie. Uh, at least I hope I, I think it's like kind of, it, it, it's almost making it too hard to follow along where it's like, all right, you watch season one, then you watch season two, then you watch the book of Boba Fett, then you watch season three, then you watch the movie, then you watch season four, and then there's another movie. And it's like, okay, I'm like, <laughs> I think it becomes just like a little <laughs> too so season two, Right. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm always like, I've been a defender of the star trackification of all of this to some degree, you know, sure. as we were talking about earlier, shout out to Lon Harris for that tweet. Um, but uh you know i i don't know when i i got out of the shower this morning i pulled out my phone first thing i saw was new star wars movie and i got really excited i was in the other room and i was like whoa and like sabrina was like what 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 and i was like new star wars movie and she was like oh (laughs) (laughs) but i was excited that's it gotta work right that's right (laughs) yeah gotta work um uh but uh yeah no i I'm I'm really into it. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see Star Wars back in the theaters. And I think like this along with the Ray movie and whatever else we got coming, I think there's a little bit <clears throat> something for everyone. And it's, it's a shame. You go to the comment section of any of these posts from like Disney or oh Lucasfilm or whatever. And every single is. comment is Disney ruined Star Wars. It hasn't been good since, you know, the, the prequels and all that <laughs> stuff. And I don't know what that. That's, who's right. David? Dave Filoni? If, if you watch Shit's Creek, you know what this is. Shout oh. out to... Yeah, <laughs> For yeah, audio only... Listeners. All these comments you see, yeah. yeah. For audio only listeners, Kevin pulled up a what looked like a sticker that said, Ooh, David on it. Ooh, David! Did you ever Frank? Well, no. Wow. Wait, would you ask me? If you knew the reference, that's what no yeah i didn't no Sorry, me neither you probably thought um, i was like you david baloney no yeah it's, right it's, it's <laughs> someone will turn turn it into that i bet yeah it's not and, and <laughs> knows what's up. yeah but uh no i was just saying like it, it's a shame it's like i i'm i mean at this point like you just don't like star wars it's yeah i'm sorry like it, it's it's bigger than han luke and leia i think it has been for a long time like since i was a kid even like sure you know it's like is, there's so many great characters, so many great stories to tell. And if you just like open yourself up to it, like some stuff you're going to like, some stuff you're not going to like, but that is just storytelling. I don't, I don't understand why people like get all in a twist about it. It's like, you don't want to see the Ray movie. Don't go see it. You don't want to see Mandalorian and Grogu. Don't go see it. It's like, all right, Brandon, I need you to say all of this again, but you need to really be angry about it so we can get you covered on all the Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> You need to go viral, man. That's yeah. not enough anger. Come on, back at it. We need our viral moment. Yeah, um, yeah I could try. I don't know. That's okay. That's um, okay. Maybe another. Maybe another time. You know. Yeah. <laughs> what can I complain about? Dave Filoni. Oh, I knew we should never trust a Dave. <laughs> oh, David Filoni. Ew, oh, David. Ew, ew. Hashtag ew, Dave Filoni. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what I'll say about the the news for the movie, I, I was I was like, oh, right. I thought that was going to happen, but I guess it was never officially announced by Lucasfilm slash Disney. 
that they were going to make a Mandalorian movie. I remember, I think we have said on this show that I, I, I would, I was killing, I would, I was dying to see these characters, Din, Grogu, the whole Mandalore, Mandoverse on the big screen. Because I think after, especially after we had seen Brandon and I went to the screening Shadow Warrior for the Ahsoka episode, it just felt very cinematic from the get go. That was Dave Filoni mm-hmm. directing, you know. And now you're gonna have John Favreau directing a Star Wars movie. I mean, I think I also talked about this on Sith Council with Christian Harloff about um, wouldn't you want John Favreau to direct a Star Wars movie? I think we had talked about this months ago. And lo and behold, here we are now. John Favreau is going to direct a Star Wars movie, and I'm very much excited to see how his vision of this universe that he brought to Star Wars and puts it up on a big screen, how it differs from the TV screen. Because, well, I hope, I mean, the volume is going to be part of it. That's just a lot of movies are using the volume for a lot of different things. And obviously Star Wars does that for, um, I think, ease of making film films and pumping them out quicker, like especially with the TV series, right? So that helps. But if you're going to make a movie, um, hopefully it looks a little bit different. I think, you know, you would get... When you get to like you know Star Trek, for instance, you have like the TV show, but then when you get to the movies, it's like a completely different feel from like the TV show, right? Because it has that cinematic feel. And I hope that there's some element of that, even though TV these days feels a little more cinematic. Because when again going back to that um, the episode that they aired or sh- or showed in the theater, I was like, man, I would love to see all of this in the theater, and we're gonna get a version of that now in the theater of this TV, the Mandoverse on the big screen. So I'm really excited about that. And I want to ask you guys about uh, what do you think it means about Pedro Pascal? And are we, I mean, there's like absolutely no way that you don't show his face in a Star Wars movie, like on the big screen. I can't imagine Pedro Pascal would be cool doing the movie or just doing the voice. I can't imagine. I'm like, he's going to want to be in, in the in the armor he's going to, want to take off his helmet show his face mm-hmm. in a star wars movie i mean kevin what do you think about take Peter off Pascal? the helmet already i just i just never how, how do you yeah take off the helmet i i mean i'm sure if our old comrade uh sean were on here he'd be mad because i know it's mandalore tradition and all that but i don't know man you know uh, you, you, it's you gotta get his face in there hope i mean i'm sure that they didn't sign off on this movie without him being attached so i mean it's he did that... he did uh post on his instagram story the the um the, the news the, okay the so, post yeah, his... so like he's, he's actually gonna, gonna, gonna be the voice off. he's gonna take his helmet mm-hmm. off he's and much it. to laura kelly's happiness he's gonna kiss both <laughs> maybe uh, it may be in the avengers uh, team up one but yeah actually uh, i want to do laura kelly one better he's gonna kiss grogu on the on the on the forehead kiss grogu <laughs> on the forehead on the forehead it was like this is my son that would be great. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, he'll he'll have his face on there. Uh, you know, he's becoming a big star. And did you see that article about him stealing a part from his? Mentor? Yeah, yeah, for he, the Game of Thrones. He, he I just saw that. Yeah, he, yeah. He mentored a student on his audition tape for Game of Thrones, and then behind the student's back, submitted his own audition tape and got the part. Uh, Reminds me of an episode of Friends when Joey is teaching soap opera for actors and (laughs) they're like auditioning for the same role and he tells his student to play the character uh, one way, he tells him to play the character gay and then then Joey plays it straight and then the guy who played the character (laughs) straight or gay gets the part. It's so, yeah. similar, yeah. but not to say. But you know, so if he's that, if he's that um, uh, cutthroat, he he made sure to make a deal that he gets get to get his face on Facetime. So good for him. I like the dude. Let's rock and roll. I want to see his face, dude. I want to see blood dripping off his face, his lip. <laughs> right. I want someone to take the helmet like Bane took off Batman's helmet. Like, oh, that would like, be interesting. Yeah, that'd, that'd be great. Cool. That'd be great. Then he didn't do it on purpose. Then, but then it's the still... armor getting all mad at him, dude. Well, Come no, because, because she asked him, "Have you re- have you removed or has someone re- removed your helmet?" You know, what you ha- say that you say, "No, no. <laughs> no I, don't, I don't recall. Yeah. I don't recall. I don't, I don't feel like they did. No, their word against mine." Why would be so honest. Yeah, you weren't there. You just... My wife, my wife asked me if I took the last Oreo cookie. Well, I don't have Oreo anymore because I'm not 
It's horrible. Sorry. But uh, <laughs> back in the day, she'd be like, hey, do you have that last cookie? I, I would think, I mean, I'd tell her the truth, but. What yeah, because really it's only you and your daughter. Oh, you need to throw your daughter, daughter, right? daughter yeah. under the bus? <laughs> Kira. Kira, threw, Kira ate the Oreo. <laughs> He's a man funny. of honor. He yeah. tells the truth. I do. I'll tell you one thing, though, that actually makes me excited about this movie um, is the fact that Dave Filoni is going to have more time and opportunity on a movie set with Jon Favreau and having all this experience of production on a on a movie on a star wars movie and he's going to take all that experience and bring it into his his own film and i think that's mm-hmm. crucial for his development as a director because obviously uh he's been on sets before i think he, he was on there with last jedi with ryan johnson i think he spent some time again with rogue one and gareth edwards and that whole group um so he's been on different sets but i think <laughs> What's Sorry, that I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was just thinking, like, so he's learned how to direct a movie and how not to direct a movie, which is <laughs> yeah. good, good, valuable experience on both accounts. Yeah, I mean, you could you could look at it that way, um, <laughs> but I think him having this experience with John Favreau as as all the experiences he's had with Mando and his experience with Ahsoka, now having more time on a movie set. And how things work on a movie set, um, learning from John Favreau again and others, of course. But I think this will only benefit. I think this only benefits Dave Filoni's movie in the long run, where you know he he gets more um, wet behind the ears, if you will, in terms of making a movie, especially a Star Wars movie. And you have a tremendous director in John Favreau, as, as Kevin pointed out. So um, I think this is really big for Dave Filoni in terms of his evolution as a director and what it could mean for for his film. So, uh, yeah. anyone have any other thoughts on this uh, Mando Grogu? I, I, I did want to just pop in my head right now, speculate who would compose the score for the movie. Ooh. Would I think Ludwig, Ludwig might come back if there's not a scheduling conflict. They gotta bring him. He's, I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, they're talking about John Williams and saying he's not retired. I think that's because they're bringing him for Star Wars, sorry, sorry, not Star Wars. For, for Superman, the other ones? For Superman and, Legacy. And oh, maybe Super- the oh, sure. Maybe the right, maybe the right movie. Yeah, maybe the right And yeah. give Kevin Kiner a movie for crying out loud. Well, he's got to do Filoni's, right? That he's Ahsoka score, man. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, what else was I going to say? What were we talking about? Pedro Pascal's showing his face. Yes, um, I, I think that they should do it, but in like try to do it in a meaningful way for like a third time now. But I think they could pull it off, or like maybe he like finally like realizes maybe with like Grogu's convincing that like it's okay to let go of like that old creed yeah. and like take the helmet off like right before like whatever third act finale is about to go down and have him take the helmet off and look at Grogu and say this is the way. Yeah, I hope uh, like there's a scene where um, they're like back on Tatooine for whatever reason, probably just because it's a Star Wars movie, they'll be on Tatooine, <laughs> and they're with Boba Fett, and Boba Fett takes off his helmet, and all the the, the Tusken Raiders recognize him, and they go up to him, and they're like, yeah, 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 <laughs> and then Grogu's just like standing there next to Din, like, dude, you can take off your helmet, <laughs> like it's okay. Um, I think he, cool. or to one up you, Brandon, because I love one upping you. Um, just kidding. And maybe he takes his helmet off in the Avengers movie when he dies, and he takes his helmet off so he can look at Grogu once with his own eyes. <laughs> <laughs> <So nice. laughs> Using those exact lines, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh Let me. Uh, I mean, no. As I was saying it, he I already did that. Similar, but yeah. I mean, it could be on his. Maybe he's dying and he wants to take the helmet off. But yeah, that might actually to Return of the Jedi. Yeah, actually, I, I corrected myself. This would be the fourth time his helmet comes off. It comes off in season one, mm-hmm. and then it comes off twice in season two. So one, once when he, ha- see, we yeah, see when, his he face? when yeah when he when yeah in the season two he takes it off in the episode with Mayfeld when he has to like take it off for the oh, computer right. system, That's right. the and then he up, takes yeah, it yeah. off again when at the Luke finale takes yeah, yeah. Grogu. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And so uh, it goes with the three days that he was available to shoot. <laughs> for right. Right. The Last of Us. Um, but I, I'll also say, you can't just show Pedro's face just only once in the movie. It, it's it's got to be like on on the bo- on a Bo-Katan level of like where she's always mm-hmm. just taking it off whenever she's done doing whatever. Like I think it it would need to. Be, I would like to think we could the story his story could Din's that is could progress with a point where he's just like yeah I'm gonna take it off and it's it's fine whatever. 
Um, okay, let's move on to uh, Ahsoka season two. Um, I think there was kind of like a foregone conclusion once season one ended that season two would happen, but there was nothing out there. There was no official word. But then they sneak in this. Oh yeah, by the way, Dave's Ahsoka did you catch that in, in development. Time, right? Did oh, yeah, it? absolutely I did. I was I like, what the I hell? I was like, they just put this hair in the, like, we weren't going to mm-hmm. notice? Like, <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, however, like the season, like the how Deadline reported, the fourth season of Mando is in development. Ahsoka 2 is in development. That doesn't actually mean it's going to be made. But, yeah, yeah season two of Ahsoka is going to be made, right? But... I think that's why it's the the word in deadline is at present development doesn't necessarily mean that's a sure thing because they've they developed a bunch of other movies that are no longer being made right but that said I still think obviously Ahsoka season two development or whatnot um, is going to come out and it's going to be interesting to see I think where they where they pick things up especially if it's coming out after. Uh, this Grogu Mando Grogu movie, you know what events have happened then that that affect perhaps the Filoni movie that ha- perhaps then affect season two of Ahsoka. Um, Brandon, was this kind of like a foregone conclusion on your part, or, or was it like a welcome, like uh, official because it was official? It's very much welcomed. Or what are your your takes on on Ahsoka two? I at least mean somewhat uh, official. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited about the continuation of the story, and I I mean, we were either gonna, either going to get a, an Ahsoka season two, or it was just going to get wrapped up somehow in the Filoni <laughs> movie. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, I'm excited about it. I really loved Ahsoka season one. I feel like like overall like hype levels on like week to week talking about Star Wars content on this podcast like. Andor was really special, but I think also Ahsoka was as well. I think like like the excitement about what's going to happen next week. What are we going to see? When's Hayden showing up? What's going on? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just uh, excited for it and uh, excited to see what happens with these characters and uh, Balin and Shinhadi and all those cool people. Um, yeah, give me more. Kevin, you I'm excited. Two? I'm excited about it. I yield the rest of my time. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, no, man. And I, I think that oh, I, I don't know if they'll bring back Hayden anymore. Um, I think you save it for the movie if you're going to do mm-hmm. it. I think. I think. I think. Him man, and Luke. Like, if you want more Hayden, do a Clone Wars show or a, or a movie. Do the Apocalypse Now movie with DH Hayden and and Ewan. Because for me, like. They ended Ahsoka, the Anakin arc, with ghost Anakin overlooking her and being, like, with that slight smile. Like, that should be it. Like, yeah. his ghost at peace, he can go now, go back to ruling the world between worlds, which is my head canon anyway. I know it's not for sure, but... Um, so, I don't know. But that was all the excitement is, like, who, you know, we'll, we'll get um, uh, uh, Zeb. That would be cool. Um, yeah. You can't, you can't do another season without Zeb. So, I think the gang's going to get back together. And I think they're going to do what they everybody was wanting them to do with the sequel trilogy. I think you'll get a shot of everybody on the ghost at one point. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, the whole group together. Uh, like, have you ever seen that Photoshop image of all the older original trilogy actors, like on the Falcon uh, together? And they're like, well, you know, it, again, it was part of an anti Disney meme. Hmm. It was like what we really wanted. Uh, yeah. But it's still really cool when you see like old Luke standing there with old Han and old Leia and Chewie sure. on the Falcon. So uh, the possibilities are exciting, and you got to get us. It, it, that's gonna pre, pre that's got to go before the Filoni verse movie because you got to get her back on the right the galaxy. Right, you can't have that, and you know unless you open the the Avengers movie with them bringing her back, kind of like how they you know saved Han. But I don't, I don't necessarily think you want to open that movie with like a, a big non sequitur set piece. I think you need not non sequitur, but like you know, yeah, you know yeah, how like yeah. Return of the Jedi feels like the first. Oh, you got. You think it's the opening scene? I'll never right, forget. right, right, right. Talk about, it, talk <laughs> yeah, about it, the right. opening talk scene. About it. All the first forty-five minutes of that. Movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm excited to see where they go. I thought uh, Ahsoka they knocked it out of the park with that, and I'm not worried about that movie or that show whatsoever. And I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll tee up the movie. So I think I think what's going to be Mando and Grogu first, then Ahsoka, then the movie. 
Yeah, because the thing is with Mando Grogu, they're saying it's going to production this year. Like, yeah. I think they, uh, I don't think they have a specified. It's moment. probably going to be like a cool, like, Western style. I don't, I mean, I, I they're going to have to raise the stakes. So you can't, it can't just yeah. feel like an episode. That's the problem, by the way, about doing so much Star Wars TV is that everybody's going to look at it and with the eyes. And if it looks like another Star Wars plus Disney plus show, people are going to yeah. rebel against it. There, oh, there's yeah. got to have that big feeling. Like, I still think one of the biggest feeling movies is that first Avengers movie. And I, I don't know, like it just, every shot is framed. It's just, it's like any Michael Bay movie. And I hate to say it. I'm not trying to say I want star Wars, Michael Bay, but like if he did know how to compose a shot and make it feel like you're like, you're you know, even the transformers, sure. movies, the, the dog shit ones still, you're like, Oh man, every shot seems like it costs like $4 million. Right. $40 sure. million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got necessarily really, at points. <laughs> Just like, yeah, they really need to make sure though that uh, this movie feels like a movie, and that that would be my only concern uh, with the movie. But uh, back to the Ahsoka thing, more more Star Wars, like I said, is good. I didn't, I don't think we needed an Ahsoka movie, and so if if that's like the show for that year, like I said, if they did one movie, one show every year, that would be great. So yeah, I'll get into uh, kind of like the 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 timeline of projects in a little bit but i okay. want to go back to mandel grogu because I, I had this one thought about we had all these we had three movies announced at celebration and but no mention of this mandel grogu movie even though it's the first it's going into production before any of those three and it's going to come out before any of those three and yet it was not announced alongside those three movies at celebration and and Part of my thinking here is, and I don't know if you guys will agree with this or not, or if you have some other take on it, but I was thinking, what if they were like, okay, look, we have, uh, Favreau has written season four, he's completed it, we have that, and now here comes the strike. If the strike goes X amount of days, then we're going to have to push back all these movies. And we're not even in, you know, we're still writing the script for, the Ray movie, uh, Stephen Knight's still writing, you know, whatever draft he's on. So they have probably minimal concept artwork, whatever, but nothing really major in terms of pre-production. If it goes, if the strike goes X amount of days, we have no choice but to move these movies back. But we still want to get something out in the theater because we were not. It's gonna. It's already been six years. You know, we do we want to wait eight years? No, we don't want to do that. I'm sh- and I'm also sure that. Uh, Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy want to get a Star Wars movie in the theaters as soon as they possibly can. And so if Favreau has season four already complete, and look, these episodes have not been the longest. I mean, you're getting like four hours of content amongst all episodes, right, from a season. If you dwindle that down to two, two and a half hours maybe even, you can make a movie. It's got to be longer than four hours. Or some, you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm saying like, okay, okay sure, maybe five, but um, I still think that you know they they may have looked at it saying, hey, this is our contingency plan. If the strike goes on this long, then at least we have something in terms of like uh, like a parachute of like we can move this into production because Mandalorian's been has three seasons already. We have we have we have our casting. We have a lot of stuff produced and sets and and props and all that stuff. We don't have to do a whole lot more to get pre-production rolling on a project like that. And if they're going to production this year, you know, in, in anticipation of getting a move, that movie out next year, maybe, you know, late next year, I don't know. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about my little theory of like, this was their contingency plan. If the strike went X amount of days, then this is what they were going to do. They pulled the lever and that's what happened. I can yeah. see it. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know that I like. I I w- wish I could say that I know more about like what goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> um, you just know, but you won't tell us. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm part of Big Hollywood, dude. Big Hollywood. <laughs> That's your new nickname, Brandon. You're Big Hollywood Hannah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can we go Hollywood. back in time? <laughs> you should have done Hollywood Hannah and thrown out. Oh my time. gosh, that would have been oh funny my as God. hell. Hollywood, dude. I'm on dude. Sunset Boulevard reading flashcards. <laughs> we did Schmodown for years. That thought never once crossed my mind. Hollywood, Hannah. and now I am. Ashamed. You know, you would have gone to Christian and be like, "Dude, I got this idea, Hollywood Hannah," and he'd be like, 
no, you're the Hitman Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like when I came up to him on day one, I was like, dude, Kaiser and I have this whole thing. I'm going to be called the Assassin. He's like, no, you're going to be the Smasher. Smasher Smets. One day, Smasher versus Crusher. It's going to be great. All right, get out. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> okay. Make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that impression. Kid, you, you, me. <laughs> you, you got like the cadence just right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I even, I've never done a Christian Harlow impersonation, but. <laughs> just like the the, the just it's just like you know like on those uh, this is way off topic but like on those like shoot days like when like everything's moving a million miles a minute that's like the like intensity in which he would talk i feel yeah like. and, and he would like dismiss you but not like disrespectfully like, no. No, 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 no. That, that, no no you're gonna you're gonna be the smasher smash it's gonna be great <laughs> it's gonna be great that's what's killing me it's gonna be great <laughs> oh that's funny Anyways, go watch Kevin and Frank on Sith Council whenever they're on. <laughs> I don't um, get invited. Uh, maybe I'll get invited. He said maybe I'll get invited now that I got a good camera, but I have to make my, <laughs> make my lighting better. Dude, but you got a lighting catastrophe happening. Um, so looking at the projects that are in the pipeline that are set to come out uh, this year, um, the Acolyte, that wrap filming back in June of 2023, we have the Skeleton Crew, which wrapped filming in January of 2023. So we're already a year. That thing's been in the – it's a year What's from – coming out? I don't know. We don't know. God, <laughs> I'm not the date, for God's sakes. Hmm. And then um, uh, The Bad Batch, the final season. Well, we still don't know when that's going to come out. What Presumably happened this year. Exactly what happened to Tech. Uh, he's still alive. It's we know dead, this. bro. He's alive. Yeah, he's alive. He's uh, he's better being... than I didn't see a body. That's right, and that's movie rules. Okay, yeah. and then Tales of the Jedi. That was Somehow also Tech you know. <laughs> Tales of the Jedi still could have come out this year. Maybe I don't know. Maybe next year because that's four. That's four um, projects to come out this year, and we haven't seen a trailer for any of these. Well, I mean, Celebration saw an acolyte teaser uh, mm -hmm. of sorts, so perhaps acolyte comes out first but then again skeleton crew has been finished filming and we know all of their directors and i mean though we don't know too much of the plot per se we're um, gonna get a trailer or something for I, you know we we gotta get a trailer soon for one of these things. celebration it's gonna be all that well celebration 2025 next year i don't have one this year no we should host our own. Scoundrels Inc. for all the new <laughs> <laughs> Scoundrel celebration. We should uh, finally then, do that gag where we go down to Anaheim and like. Oh May, my gosh! Yeah, just, for those listening, yeah. watching, we had we had an idea to do this gag for Anaheim that. Uh, don't sell them, spoil it. It's not gonna, We're not going. What do you mean? How do you know? Right, uh, right, whatever. Okay, fine. We, we were do at it one day. convention together, all of us. We didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, just kidding. You can tell. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Actually, because 2025, we're supposed to get Andor season two. Hell yeah! Um, and then presumably we'll get a Mando Grogu movie, the Mando Grogu movie in 2025. I don't know how. Maybe 2026. But if they're going to production, sometime clock's ticking, man. Like I don't like can you, people. But like I said, but like I said, you know they have a lot of stuff already in terms of quote unquote pre production with Mando and Grogu with this world, so. It could, they could probably do, bring it out next May or, or December, but uh, then you're getting into Avatar Avatar uh, territory in December and all that, so I don't think they want to mess around with you that. You don't want to get into Avatar territory. <laughs> territory, Listen. that's right. No, to, it's called Pandora, it okay, Kevin? Come on. It's called Pandora, okay? To put this into perspective, NASA announced today that like the Artemis mission got pushed, right. pushed back to late 2025, and people were complaining about that. They're like, oh, that's so long. Did and yet we're, you? we're gonna have people we're gonna have Did people walking on the moon before I see Andor season two. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? Well, that's no, that's twenty twenty six is the moonwalk. They're doing a oh, moonwalk. I thought twenty twenty five is the lunar I orbit. Thought doing, okay, I they're thought orbiting in twenty twenty. My breaking all sorts of 
NDAs here with you. <laughs> yeah, I think a lady was in your, did you mess up like the, the screw or whatever when you were building it? Yeah. <laughs> all branded, yeah all. I used a Phillips head, should have used a flat head. Damn, it happens. Classic mistake. Oh, rookie, man, was, ah, rookie move, I dude. You get more torque out of the Phillips. Come on. I'll explain it to my wife, like when that mission finally happens, like if you're in mission control and the one thing you have you've been working on and then that yeah. fails and they all just look slow, like everybody just looks over at you and you're just like Oh, get Homer out. Simpson into the bushes type of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> either, either way, we're going to have people orbit the moon before I see Andor season. <laughs> right, right. Um, and then 2027. You're going to have people colonizing the moon before we see the Ryan Johnson trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd be cool. I'd take that. I mean, honestly, I mean, that'd be cool. Um, anyway, but Crazy. 2027, maybe we get the Ray movie in 2027 now. Now that it's getting pushed back. Maybe it's 2026. I don't know, but you would pres- like. They got to go into production, pre-production on that pretty soon to get something out in 2026. So maybe 2027. I don't know. And then you still have Filoni's movie and the James Mangold movie, Dawn of the Jedi and all that. So we might not get the Filoni movie till 2028, you know? Um, So it's going to be a while. And by that time, and by that time, the technology might have progressed so much that we'll actually get. Han, Luke, Leia, deep fake AI, whatever version oh, in the Filoni in the Filoni in the Filoni movie, which I still don't know how I feel about that. I feel like we have this conversation or topic comes up every once in a while, and I still I'm like, you cut, somehow have to have him in that movie, but like, how can you do it? <laughs> the, I don't know. It's Just a weird cast, man. You got the actors yeah. already there. I'm. I'll be curious to see what they do. I won't be mad if they recast, and I won't really be that mad if they go the AID fake route. But if they do go that route, it better look freaking good. That's all I know. I just want to see the characters together. Like, Alden Ehrenreich, Billy Lord, and whoever that one guy, they they put Mark Hamill's face over in Book of Boba Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's got the chops. Let him, let him take a crack at it. Cap, or no, Kevin, where, where, you sure. on, where you at? I'm not sure about that. That's for another episode. I have <laughs> Cause I have thoughts on it, but yeah, I mean, cause it, it, ideally, like, yeah, the deep fake would be great, but I think that's bad for cinema. Mm. So it's like, it's an interesting it, time dude. we're at. We're at. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I'm convinced. It just really Mon- sets out. It is this. Uh, Will Thasso has a podcast called um, Dudesy, and they did a full George Carlin. AI generated new stand up called like I'm glad I'm Whoa. dead and they put every one of George Carlin's stand ups into the machine and so he analyzed every one of his stand ups and then it regurgitated it out then they used AI software to, to mimic his voice and they added like the echo and the the mic even the mic you could hear the mic and the, the crowd noise and it's a full hour special. George Carlin's been dead for several years, and now he has a full special out, which the ethics of it, like I turned it off after like five minutes. So, I mean, not even that. And then I was like, man, it just, just felt wrong. You know, yeah. like it's obviously it's not really Carlin writing those jokes. And so, and even it's like being self deferential saying like, I'm back from the dead. Next thing you know, Bill Cosby's going to be back. You know, well, no, he's not that he's dead, but like, oh, AI, Bill Cosby's dead better than me. I'm going to <laughs> like so the, the the thing about the deep fake i mean even if you got everyone's permission including the yeah. estate of leia and leia but the estate of carrie fisher right. and the uh which i think she'd be down for she did the rogue one right um and if you got the you know you know you do the same thing they did probably better though the, than in indy five and then you yeah have... interestingly enough now that you mention it all three of them have been deep faked in some at some, some point, point. Yeah, it's so just put it all together. It's fine, but what sucks is it's such an expensive route, and I don't think that they would be able to carry their own movie alone. I mean, it'll be fine in small doses if it's in the Avengers movie, right? I call it the Filoni Avengers movie, but it just—I think it would set a bad precedent as far as future tales because I think people would be less now. But if they recast and they got Sebastian Stan as Luke or that guy that you like as Luke. And they yeah. got killer. Let's say they need an older looking Han, so you can't really do Alden, right? So you, you get another Han that looks more like old Han, because Alden's like playing that specific year for him. Yeah, right. And then you get, and then you get a different Leia, and they're good actors and they do well. Then, then you could start a franchise of new movies about them. But if you do a deep fake, there's no way they're going to do a movie with just three of them in a full deep fake movie. Then you're like, it's like watching Polar Express. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. You might, exactly. Anime. Yeah, you might as well make an actual animated. But movie. if you recast, just like like I said, the uh, um, the uh, script of Duel of the Fates is so good, but it was so focused on Leia that there was no they were no way they were going to be able to do it. So we got Brandon's favorite movie, The Rise of Sky, Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Here's the thing. If they would have just said no, it like, and I, I honestly believe if Carrie Fisher knew what was going on, she would be like, "Don't use deleted scenes of me; just wedge me in, recast, not like cast my Meryl Streep's like one of her best friends. Like, give Meryl Streep the role. Like, it, I think she yeah. would have wanted. That, I'm not speaking for Carrie Fisher, obviously, but I do think that in my heart of hearts that Carrie uh, would want would think that it's more important for the story of Leia to come out than them just making sure they had her as, as an homage to her. So I think that. Um, we might have gotten Duel of the Fates if they decided not to try to fake it with the with the deleted scenes uh, and repurposed footage. And, and I mean, I don't think that was... Duel of the Fates and, and with a recasted Leia. And, like, that would be the only thing, you know? But I get why they didn't, but I'm just saying, uh, I would yeah. think if it was me and then, uh, you know, if something needed to carry on without me, I would want them to... I wouldn't want them to like change the story that was originally planned, you know. But then again, nothing about that trilogy was originally planned from the yeah, get go, yeah. as you saw in that new Adam Driver article and stuff. That we right, talked about right. There, so, but yeah. See, yeah, I told you I didn't want to go on a tangent about it, but but yeah, it's interesting times ahead for for Star Wars uh, on, in all facets. You know, the stories they're telling, how they decide to tell them, what technologies they're using. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting in, in the next you know, handful of years here coming up. So uh, we'll be closing out the 2020s in an interesting way with Star Wars. Uh, that that much is for sure. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic because I always love new new Star Wars content coming out and everything that's kind of right now that they have more or less on the books. I'm excited to see, you know, what they do, especially like Bad Batch and, and Tales of the Jedi, you know, they get animated. Star Wars is some of the best Star Wars, so... Um, looking forward to the Mando Grogu movie and, and how that, and I also think real quick too, before we wrap up here, um, I just think it's also kind of like more of a, a sure bet type of thing in terms of releasing this movie before the other three, because we Mando and Grogu are, are more or less a known commodity in, in the Star Wars and, 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 and in the general audience as well. Like, it, it was a phenomenon, remember, those first couple of seasons, and um, it permeated through every walk of life. It was, you know, Grogu phenomena, and so I think if this is, you put you put those characters in a movie theater on the movie screen, um, I think it's going to have a pretty good reception. It just depends on what story they're going to tell, what, what the stakes are going to be, as we've talked about, as Kevin mentioned, and uh, see where it goes from there. But uh, any, any final words, Brandon, before we wrap up here this week? Uh, recast if they could do it with Mon Mothma they could do it with anybody else They those actors bounce back and forth if you watch it in chronological order <laughs> it's so. true it's true <laughs> Kevin any parting words uh, news, no, man, uh, good news and I'm glad that we talked about positive stuff uh, in the space right so yeah I'm absolutely. happy for new Star Wars I'm happy for all those that are getting a chance to tell their story in Star Wars and I think that uh, you know as someone that uh went through uh, quite a life scary moment when I thought maybe it was going to be cut off short, like life's too short to worry about and to sweat small stuff. So um, I'm kind of always trying to look at the positive things. I'm still human. Sometimes I look at the negative and I try to not to do that, but uh, the moving forward, I think it's going to be fun and I'm glad I'm just glad we're getting uh, back in the theaters. Uh, although the next Star Wars movie you guys will see in the theaters, <laughs> KOTOR Convergence, which just released a new trailer on my channel it's doing quite well uh, and it's uh you can go to smash city studios and you can see it and of course that's our multiversal revan tale we're gonna have dark side revan meeting light side revan and uh it's real exciting it's uh we just cre we just created a badass new section uh, uh last week so nice. excited for that and i will be running out of theater for my friends and cast and family in la to nice. see it on the big screen is there a, a release date or you can't say uh, I can't tell you because I don't know. It's if whenever it'll be done. I I would assume, hopefully, probably around. It's a labor April. of love, so you guys. April or yeah. May, probably. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe I don't think it would be sooner than that. But I 
I would think that would be cool if it was during my birthday month, but I think it might be more like May and that would be cool if we get like a May 22nd type screening going. So we'll see. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up here at good old Scoundrels Inc. headquarters. I'm Frank Janish. That was Kevin Smets and Brandon Hollywood Hanna. We will see you next week. Peace. Scoundrel. Scoundrel. I like the sound of that. <laughs>